Welcome to this lecture series on reinforcement learning. In the previous video, we discussed how we can model Q values as a function of a continuous input space. And these functions have parameters. How can we optimize these parameters? To do so, we will define a loss function and work out a gradient method, which in fact turns into a semi-gradient method, as we will see. Now we have a representation of Q values with parameters. And now the next question is, how would we train these parameters? For training, we need a loss function, also called error function. Now, what could such an error function look like? Remember that the Bellman equation imposes a consistency condition between Q values up here and Q values one step further down. Now, of course, here, all of this is the correct statistical estimate. But think we do something online. And then in the online fashion, such as SASA, we would say basically the Q value up here should be explained by the reward and the Q value down here. And so this is what I've written down here. And now we can interpret this and say, well, this part here is sort of the target. And now if the Q value is too small, if this two Q value is too small, I want to increase it. If it's too big, I want to decrease it. So this is really like an error measure. Now the error measure should be a quadratic measure because the differences can be positive and negative. So I square this. And now the same target appears here. I just have rewritten it in a form that I highlight that there is depend there's this dependence on my set of weights, on my set of parameters. Okay? And then now I have a loss function, I have an error function. What can I do now? I can say I take I take the gradient with respect to my set of parameters, my set of weights, or the weight vector W, and uh, great, but there's also another W here, and this one I should ignore because I really consider this as part of the target, and the target should be stable. So this is an ad hoc trick to stabilize this error function which is statistically not completely correct. We work in an online setting and it becomes slightly more stable if we only take the gradient with respect to the Q value up here, this Q value, and that's why Sutton and Barter in their book, they call it a semi-gradient. You only take the gradient with respect to the Q value that you really want to change. So now we have this loss function and uh, let me write it again. So here was the target. So we compare the target R plus gamma Q of S prime A prime with the Q value that we want to change, the Q value up here, Q of S A, and then we said we take the whole thing and square it and then for beauty reasons you can put in a one half in front you don't have to and then this would be my error function my loss function and now let's do the usual thing the usual thing is gradient descent so let's just say these Q things depend on a parameter, and I call this parameter now for short theta. It's one of the parameters, could be one of my weights uh, in a neural network. It could, it could be my weight in a radial basis function network. And I plot here, I plot here the error, and this is my momentary weight. This is my momentary value of the weight, my momentary value of the parameter theta zero, and then this error function is some function of 
this parameter. And now gradient descent means I want to move down on the error function, which means in this case, I would have to update a little bit. So let's calculate this now together. So I have my delta theta, which is this little update step. Delta theta is minus eta times de d theta. And uh, we said we use only the dependence of theta in the Q value you want to change, not in the target part. So the theta dependence is considered to be here. So let's take the derivative. I have to use the chain rule. So I have a square, which is going to kill the one half in front of the error function. So I have a eta, and then I have to copy whatever I have here. And then I have to take the derivative of this term here with respect to theta, which gives me a minus sign, which cancels this minus sign. So I have a plus, and then I have here my dq theta, dq theta of sa with respect to the parameter theta. And then I have to copy whatever is inside the square brackets. So it's a r plus gamma q of s prime a prime and then I have minus q of s a where this q is considered to depend on the parameter of theta. Now this is nice because this here is just the standard TD error. So the updates of my parameters that describe the Q function, the Q value, the function of Q values, the update is proportional to the TD error, just as in standard Sachsa. And then I have the extra term, and that's the, that, that's the derivative of my Q function with respect to the parameters. And this derivative, remember the Q function is modeled by a radial basins function network or by a neural network. This is where you, where you th this is where you have to take the derivative. And then finally, this gives the update delta theta. So the idea is we have an error function Normally, the error function would correctly have a dependence here on W and there on W, but we ignore this and we say we only take the semi gradient. The semi gradient ignores the dependence of the term which is S prime A prime and only takes the one that is Q of S A. And this is a heuristic trick to stabilize learning, which works very well. You take the derivative, you have your loss function, you update your parameters, and you are back to a normal setting as used in deep learning or in neural networks in general. So we consider this as a target, and we take the gradient only with respect to the weights in this term here. So let's summarize. Function approximation means that we use a function with parameters w to model q values. And that allows us to generalize to unseen parts of the state space. And then we saw that we can learn parameters w with the loss function. The loss function implements the consistency condition of the Bellman equation. And uh, if we do uh, gradient descent, in fact, it turns out it's better to do semi-gradient. We keep one part of the Q values fixed so that it can serve as a target. And this idea of loss function and semi-gradient can also be used to train, to train deep neural networks with Q values as output variables.